so obviously coming off of a uh, tough loss, I don't think we played very well or not well enough on special teams to help us when we did some good things. Um, darn near blocked a punt. Um, had a nice kickoff return to start the second half, made both our kicks. We didn't really want to give uh, uh, McLeod an opportunity to so kick a couple of touchbacks. The onside kick was close. I think we need to be more physical, get in there, try to get that thing out, try to dig it out of there. Um, but overall, just not quite enough to uh, help us win. So the focus this week is uh, finishing strong. You know, people always ask, you know, you know, what is there to play for? I think there's a lot to play for. When, when you coach and play in the NFL and have that opportunity, have that uh, – Basically, I call it a blessing. It's it's incredible. My, I love my job, and I know a lot of these guys love their jobs as well. Uh, and our job is to go win games. And um, so we have another opportunity, the last opportunity of the season on Sunday afternoon against the division champion. And if you beat them again, that's twice you sweep them. And that's a big deal, especially for our fans and for our organization so to go off into the offseason with a good taste in your mouth. So that's been our focus this week, and then we'll continue to be through the game on Sunday afternoon. Thank you very much, Coach. First question will be from Jake Trotter. Yeah, hey Mike. I know the uh, the season's not over yet. It's probably the last opportunity, though. We'll we'll get to talk to you about it for a while. So, um, how do you think special teams did this year when you look at all the different units? Yeah, I think you know. I was thinking about that because I figured somebody as intelligent as you, Jake, would ask that question. Um, so I think kickoff wise, I thought we did a great job. I thought Chase kicked the ball well for us. I thought we covered our tails off. We have to finish strong on Sunday. Uh, we challenged a lot of good returners, and and I think we had an outstanding year. Uh, on kickoff. Kickoff return, uh, we weren't quite as explosive. I think we're probably middle of the pack in terms of uh, drive start average, uh, but always looking for more there for our, to help our offense. Our punt game was uh, inconsistent starting with the punting punter uh, position. Um, you know, we use a lot of different gunners and rotate a lot of guys in there. And I don't, I don't think we were quite as good as I would hope, have hoped uh, that we would be on punts. So that's going to be a focus in the offseason. Uh, punt return, our average isn't great, but we've returned, I think, 43 kicks for 317 yards. And that's probably a couple hundred yards more pump return yards than we had last year. So to me, that's nearly 32 first downs for our offense. And we're all about field position. I'm not worried about average or stats. Uh, would I like a touchdown in that phase? Of course. Um, but I think we've done a, we did a better job on pump return this year than last. Uh, field goal, I thought we started out great, started out the season great. And, and we've been a little inconsistent down the stretch. And then field goal block really... <laughs> Uh, it's amazing the people that they, they seem to make all their kicks against us. The one that we tipped against Houston is the only one field goal they've missed, and they missed a couple of PATs, but that's about it. Um, so probably average, uh, and I'm not looking for average. I'm not satisfied with average, so I hope that, you know, from here we continue to get better at both, you know, scheme, fundamentals, techniques, personnel, uh, and that'll be the focus this offseason. Thank you, Jake. Marla Wright now is next. Yeah, Mike, I was just wondering, did you – find a guy I mean I'm not talking about your returners but like your core guy you know you've had some in the past here that kind of your leader um you, did you find him this year I thought MJ Stewart did a great job for us leading uh Elijah Lee's been a great leader for us Mac Wilson played well for us this year um uh, Sione Takitaki did a great job uh, this year you know Harris Bryant fills in on you know does a great job on field goal punt and kickoff return um, I'm trying to think of some other guys. I, I want anybody to get mad at me for missing them, but you, you know, our, I think we got pretty good personnel here. Are we always looking to get better? I mean, if you stay healthy, but nobody stays healthy throughout the whole year. Um, but I think, you know, guys like John Johnson, when he was healthy and, re and running the punt team, did a phenomenal job and he's a great leader and a, and a great teammate. Um, but you know, I, I, I like our personnel. Do, you know, do I hope we have more explosive returns next year? Of course. Do I hope we're more consistent at the punter and kicker uh, positions? Of course. Um, but I like our guys. They play hard, and I think we got the right people here. We just got to keep building and getting better. Just a quick one. Um, you were Carlson was so good on the onside kicks. Did you did you miss him? Um, yeah, we just had the one hands team play this year. Um, last year, I think we had six or seven that we recovered. Um, and Carlson recovered several of those. But, you know, Harrison Bryan can do it. Uh, Austin Hooper's been out there for us. Uh, we, and we just had the one. We didn't play it as well as we had hoped. Uh, but, you know, we got to cover all those, to be honest with you. Thank you, Marla. Dan Lobby is next. Hey, hey Mike. I, I wanted to ask you about Kevin because, um, you know, we, we asked you so much about him last year and how he handled the adversity last year. And, and then this year is kind of a different sort of adversity because the season just hasn't gone the way you guys wanted. So I, I guess how have you seen him – sort of navigate this season? You know, I, I think some people say, well, it's similar to last year, but I don't think it is because it's um, last year, you know, kind of hit us down the stretch. 
uh, you know, a few people here, a few people there. But this year we had obviously the Raider game was just 20, 25 guys, coaches, players missing. Um, you know, other teams are running into that too. You know, like I said last year, I mean, he's he did a great job of, of being very even keeled and handling every situation with a very calm demeanor, uh, which I think really helps the whole team. There's always been a plan. Uh, there's always been a uh, uh, kind of a, uh, you know, what do we do if type thing? And and I think we followed that plan. There, there's, there's always that foundation and that, you know, kind of gives a calming feeling to the entire team. So we knew what that plan was going to be each and every week. And, you know, I know we had some tough losses down the stretch that we felt like we should have won all those games and we'd be in the playoffs right now. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, he didn't change. And, and when you when you have a head coach, a leader that is, is very, uh, you know what to expect from him, that really helps the coaching staff and the players. And, and then just, you know, in general, in the return game, it seems like the last you know, during your time here, you've been searching for that guy. I know JoJo was kind of that guy, but he's had injuries and things like that. How frustrating has it been that you just haven't been able to find that consistent, like, kick returner? Yeah, I, I mean, anytime you, you know, come here with the success that we had in Minnesota and then not have that same type of success, it is frustrating. But, you know, we're going to get there. Um, that's going to be our plan and our focus this offseason. We're going to continue uh, working on blocking better and continue working on better schemes or continue working on, you know, getting the uh, best returner back there. And, and that'll be our main focus. Thanks, Dan. Scott Pesher, go ahead. Hey, Mike, when you have a year that falls short of expectations like this one, is there a danger from either a coaching perspective or even organizationally not to overreact to such a bad year? Well, that's the thing I'm going to talk about, you know, the question about Kevin, you know, we're not going to overreact. Um, we do have to react. I think there's got to be a, uh, a focus this entire off season of, you know, where, where did we fall short? Why did we fall short? And where do we go from there? Um, and, you know, that's kind of what we do every year anyway, in the off season, we're always trying to get better. I'm going to study the league leaders in, in the different phases and I'm going to study us and study our personnel and what can we do a little bit better schematically? What can we do better fundamentally? Uh, what, what personnel is, you know, do we need to get, what positions do we need to get better personnel at? Um, but at the end of the day, we, we do that every off season anyway, we're not going to, we're never going to overreact. I think that, you know, knee jerk reaction is, uh, they never work anyway, and that's certainly not who our um, leaders are. Our head coach and our general manager do not react that way. They're very, very intelligent men that think through things, and I think we got a good staff and a personnel staff and a coaching staff that uh, that work extremely well together, and I think that's going to benefit us going forward. And to follow up on what Dan asked about the return game, I know so many things go into it, but do you feel like you need to get bring in new re new returners for you know not just blocking, but the actual returner guys? Um, it depends. I mean, you know, Donovan plays so much offense now and he gets a little bit banged up and, you know, Felton's been there and then Jojo got hurt and I'm not making excuses. That's just kind of the way the NFL NFL works. Um, would I like a, a second or third round pick that is just a returner? Of course. I mean, um, you know, for Cordero Patterson was actually a, a late first round pick and he was the best kickoff returner in the National Football League for several years. Um, you know, Marcus Sherrills was a college free agent. Uh, that broke every Minnesota punt return record that we have, including scoring five times in the time we were together. So, um, you know, I've had those guys before, and I hope that's, you know, kind of where, where we go in the future. Thank you, Scott. Let's go to Nate Orr. Hey, Mike. Uh, you mentioned, you know, you guys have a good staff, and I know you know Joe Woods well, and I've asked you about him before earlier this season, um, you know, when maybe he was facing a little adversity, but what have you thought of the job he's done? It seemed like, you know, after that New England game, the defense really kind of started to find a uh, groove. What, what do you think of Joe and the job he's done? Great thing about Joe is he, he never panicked. He never overreacted. He never did a knee-jerk reaction. He just, he believes in what he believes in. And his staff believes in what they're doing. The players believe in what he's teaching and, and preaching. And and I think Joe does a fantastic job um, as a defensive coordinator, as a leader of that defense. And, you know, he's going to be a head coach someday. And, and I know that uh, um, the defense got better because he stayed the course. Um, you know, he didn't panic. He didn't overreact. Oh, my gosh, what are other teams doing? What I got? We got to change everything we're doing. No, he just went back to the drawing board and say, what do we do well? How do we put our guys in position to be? successful and I think that's what any good football coach does that's what I try to do I know that's what they try to do on offense and um you know it's the National Football League yeah this there's a it's a long season 17 game season you're going to have your your highs and lows your ups and downs and and uh you know I'm proud of the way Joe reacted after that that New England game because I know it hurt him he was down for a bit and you know maybe a day and then he bounced back and, and got the guys playing hard again
And Mike, I, earlier um, when you were opening, you, you said that there's a lot to play for. Um, tell me, is this perception or reality that as a coaching staff, that is a challenge you guys face in, in convincing players not to just go through the motion? Well, if you're a professional football player, certainly a professional football coach, you never go through the motions. Uh, number one, we're paid to coach and play and we're paid to win. Um, that's the bottom line. We owe that to our organization, our owners. Uh, we owe that to our fans um, all around the world that are Cleveland Browns fans, best fans in the NFL. And I think at the end of the day, the players have that name on the back of their jersey. You know, they're, they're, they're being critiqued. They're being evaluated by all the other 31 teams along with us, whether they stay here or go somewhere else, uh, if they're free agent or whatever the case may be. Um, I told the guys this morning, we're very blessed to have this opportunity to coach and play in the NFL, to have one more opportunity in, in the 2021 season. I mean, what an incredible opportunity that it is for us to go out on Sunday afternoon against a very good football team and get after them. So, I mean, if you can't get up for that because it's the National Football League, uh, you know, like I tell you guys all the time, I thank God every day for the opportunity I have to coach in this organization. And if the players don't approach it that way, shame on them. If the coaches don't approach it that way, shame on them. But I think we've got a really good group of guys that are going to go out Sunday and, and finish the season strong. Thanks, Nate. We'll take two more quick ones. Mary Kay Cavett, Tony Grossi. Uh, yeah, Mike, just wondering, you've had obviously now a couple of opportunities to serve as uh, the acting head coach here. And, um, you know, we've talked before about how you uh, aspire to be a head coach someday. So with the coaching openings coming up now, uh, just wondering if you would, of course, embrace, I'm sure, embrace the opportunity, but coming from the special teams realm, how do you sort of, uh, you know, make it known or, or get your hat tossed in the ring that you would like opportunities like that? Um, you know, I think it's difficult for special teams coordinators because there's always that stigma that's only special teams, which I think is ridiculous. Um, I think we have to, you know, continue to uh, promote good special teams coordinators for the opportunities to be head coaches. I think that's, you know, up to agents. It's uh, really talking to owners and and saying, you know, let's get these guys in front of the owners. Let them, let them interview. Um, you know, I'd like to you know, interview against some of these other coaches that are having opportunities to, to be head coaches. And, um, you know, my wife asked me many years ago, said, you know, do you want to be a head coach someday? I said, yes, I do. And she said, well, you might want to get out of special teams because, you know, we're not getting a lot of chances and it's probably really good advice. But at the end of the day, I absolutely love what I do. I love being the special teams coordinator for the Cleveland Browns. And if I'm a special teams coordinator for till I retire in 10 years or so, then that so be it. That's okay. Um, but I think there are a lot of good special teams coordinators that should have opportunities because it's all comes down to leadership. It's not calling offensive players or defensive players or even special teams. It's all about leadership and leading a group of men into uh, uh, into a season, you know, to prepare during the, the spring, the summer, throughout the season, all the adversity, et cetera. And I've been around some really good head coaches, including the one we have here. And uh, I think you learn from every good head coach and you kind of take on, you know, use your personality, learn the good, good and the bad that you see from your leaders and, and you continue to move on. I did that in the Navy and I would do that in coaching as well. So I would welcome the opportunity to be a head coach, but you know, we'll see. Thanks Mary Kay. Last one, Tony Grossi. All right. Hi Mike, I have two questions. The first one, this is not a question about Chase McLaughlin. It's, it's more about Evan McPherson. I see this guy bombing 50 yard field goals all year and he was drafted. What's your position on drafting kickers to finally solidify that position? I think you need to draft the right guy. Um, I don't think you draft a kicker just to draft a kicker or draft a punter just to draft a punter. When I went down and was there for the workout and I saw Coach Simmons there from Cincinnati and some other special teams coordinators from around the league, you know, um, Evan's a fine young kicker. And we knew right then and there he's the best kicker coming out uh, this year. And Cincinnati grabbed him and they've done a nice job with him. They've, they've used him really well and he's made some big plays, big kicks for him. And he does have a big leg. He kicks off well and he was a good kid, good head on his shoulders. I think part of that is being mature enough to handle that situation. Um, some kickers that are drafted or, or signed as college free agents, even when they're rookies, that uh, they're not quite ready. Uh, that happens a lot with kickers because it's such a mental game. But I think Evan is a very mature young man that's handled it well. And I think I knew that when I interviewed him and talked with him. And and I, I know Cincinnati saw a lot in him too. And, and uh, that's why they drafted him. All right, everybody, we got to wrap there. Coach, thank you for your time today. All right, guys. Thank you.